Well, welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant, and today I'm going to show you how we can use the gradient filter within Lightroom and edit it. So as you may well know, uh, gradient filters uh, go back to the days of film um, uh, where you'd put on these gradient uh, filters over the lens and it would basically be used to darken the top half of the frame if you're shooting in a landscape. Um, and you can obviously adjust these. It also came in different weird colours, especially in the 80s. There was the coking filters which had all these tobacco colours and all sorts of weird and wonderful uh, contraptions. Now, um, I've got a confess I've got quite a few gradient filters um, polarizing filters and uh, neutral density filters you know to make you extend your exposures uh, for those sort of blurry cloud effects and they're very high quality and very expensive ones because obviously anything you put in front of the lens is going to deteriorate the quality so you always buy the best you can afford but some of these you know up around 200 uh, UK pounds for and uh, I use all of them I am a bit of a lazy bugger and I don't carry them with me, any extra bulk I try and avoid. And I've got into the habit of doing uh, a lot of the gradient stuff within Lightroom and uh, or Photoshop. And so I'm going to show you a couple of techniques of how you can kind of fine tune the gradient. Now one of the problems with using gradient filters, uh, whether in film or in, in, in Lightroom, is as you drag the darkness down across the sky, it also can often uh, darken treetops and uh, hilltops etc and it can you know it's a bit of a telltale sign that you've used something so I'm going to show you uh, how to use the gradient filter and, and edit it to make it look a bit more natural so we're in Lightroom and this is the image we're going to work on as I said and there is detail in this sky I tell you that now you, you this won't work with an empty sky if, if your sky is too burnt out there's no detail in there you're not going to pull nothing back so you've got to know that there's a bit of detail in there now so um, what we're going to do now, I'm just going to very quickly and roughly just process this image and development module. Normally start off by clicking the auto, that sets my black and white points in the image. Um, I can then hold down the alt or option key and just drag down my highlights, like so, you can see those going there, fading away. Uh, maybe bring down the whites a little bit, hold down the alt or option key again, so we know we've got all that detail showing through now it's still quite light but it's uh nothing's clipping in there um the blacks so i want to bring those down a little bit more mm, probably not i mean there's quite a lot of mist in this picture and i quite like to retain that mist uh, as a bit of atmosphere um it sort of it enhances the uh the distances within the image so i don't want to get rid of that so i think we're nearly there i might just up the contrast just a little bit um, and also the warmth. I'm just going to warm this up a little bit. And that's in keeping with what I remember from the evening when I shot this warm light. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta, I think. And that gives it a little bit more of a, a golden look. Like so. Okay, so there's my adjustment. Not bad, uh, but of course, there's a sky to contend with. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab the gradient tool. Okay, now the gradient tool often will remember your last settings. So if you've got a sort of uh, adjustments in here, just press the alter option key and that will turn the effect uh, lettering there into reset. You just press that and it will reset all your settings. I'm going to grab, uh, sorry, I've got the gradient there. I'm gonna, just going to drag the gradient down over the sky and bring it down about there across the water as well. Remember, it's gradiating from top to bottom. Okay, so let's bring down the exposure to start with. Not too much. We don't want to make it too muddy. Um, I'm going to bring down the highlights maybe a little bit there. Again, not too much. Bring down the sh shadows just a touch. The whites maybe just a little bit as well. I don't want, to go, I don't want it to go too grey and too muddy. I want to try and keep some nice uh, transition in there, tone. Okay. So, we've already done a fair bit there. There's before, there's after. So that's just brought out a bit of colour in the sky. A bit more tone. I'm going to add a little bit more warmth to this. Only a touch. And also, again, a bit more magenta. Okay, so I think we're pretty much there. Now, you'll notice 
We've also darkened the hills here and the tree quite a bit. Now, this is quite a mild uh, example. You know, we can have a lot worse than this, where you've darkened the sky so much that the top of this tree and the hills go very dark, and, it, and it's always a telltale sign you've used a gradient of some kind. So, if you do that, there is a little trick I'm going to show you, uh, which means we can edit this back and make it more of a, rather than a global adjustment, we can turn this into more of a selective adjustment by removing some of the darkness in certain areas of the image. So how do we selectively adjust the gradient? So in the gradient panel here, you may notice uh, next to the edit uh, text at the top here, there's one called brush. And this is where uh, you can use this to actually selectively paint away with this brush the adjustments or add more. Okay, you can also use it to add adjustments. So this is where you've got to be a bit careful. You can... Uh, just leave it as it is, and by holding down the Alt or Option key, the crosshair in our cursor will change to a minus, which means it's uh, erasing, okay? But to do that, you need to make sure, you, you want the flow down quite low when you're doing this. You don't want to go in too hard because you make a mess of it. Um, so for some reason, when you hold down the Alt or Option key, um, you need to come in and change the flow for the erase section. Otherwise, for some reason, you're just uh, er erasing with the flow from the normal brush, if that makes sense. Alternatively, just click on Erase, okay, and you can just your flow there, and it will stick, okay. Um, and so you want it to listen, want it down quite low, and we're just going to go in and just very gently, bit by bit, just paint away off the horizon here that darkening adjustment, and that should help then us retain that nice mist and depth that that gives the image. Okay, now you're probably looking at this and thinking it's not doing the thing. I can assure you it is. Um, let me turn the flow up to 75, and you'll see now. Okay, so I probably got away with that, but I wouldn't advise having the flow up that high. I would turn it right down as far as you can. Okay, so that is now turned our global uh, adjustment with the gradient tool into one that's editable and we've managed to selectively take it away from the horizon. Now this is, as I said earlier, um, a very subtle gradient on this image. On some images where you've got like maybe cliffs or tall trees in shot, um, as you gradient over the sky, as I said, you will darken those areas quite significantly. And anybody looking at the image will say, oh yeah, he's used a gradient tool in Lightroom, Photoshop, or a gradient filter on the camera. So this just helps you kind of subtly take that effect away and make it look a bit more natural. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip, and I hope to catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.